Okay, so Dwarf Lab has sent me the new Dwarf 3 that we've all been waiting for. Uh, they're not shipping yet, but they sent them out to myself as well as some other beta testers. The hardware, as far as I understand, is ready to go. They're still working on the applications for the phones. Uh, those are still in beta, so myself, again, as well as others, are going to be doing some testing along with their team and hopefully get these things shipped out. For those of you that have pre-ordered, I believe they're talking about end of September, beginning of October. So I'm not going to do a full in-depth review. I just received this unit. I just wanted to go over some of the physical differences, um, talk about the specifications and how it's improved over the original Dwarf 2. So we'll get started with the cases here first. And obviously not that it has any difference over performance of the unit, but um, you know they have changed them just a little bit. So here's, this is the original Dwarf 2 with the red stitching and such, which doesn't exist on the old one. Pretty much the same size. The Dwarf 3 is a little bit larger than the Dwarf 2 is. So obviously the case may be a little bit larger as well, although they do appear to be about the same size. So on the original Dwarf 2, we'll start up on the top here you have your power button up on the top on the dwarf three they have actually moved that and put it right in the center of our indicator ring if we turn them both around to get a view of the back on the dwarf two this was our battery compartment and if you bought the deluxe version it came with a spare battery so you can swap it out what they have done is instead of giving us a replaceable battery as well as a spare the battery is built into this unit so pros and cons right it's built into the unit so it's not replaceable but you don't have to mess with it any longer while we're talking about the batteries we'll go over the specifications in a little bit more detail in a minute here but those replacement batteries that came with the original dwarf 2 were 5600 milliamp hours the built-in one is 10,000 milliamp hours so pretty much have the equivalent of two batteries built into the dwarf 3 versus versus the two external batteries for the Dwarf 2. Uh, another change is also right here behind this cover is where the micro SD card goes. Um, the Dwarf 2 did ship with a 64 gig card. The new one, there is no slot to replace a card, but it does come with 128 gig of memory built into the unit. Again, non-replaceable. It's all contained within the box. So, so again, pros and cons. I like that the memory is built into it personally. Uh, it just means I can't pull a memory card out and go over to my computer if I want to do processing like in Serial or PixInsight or any other software on my computer. I would have to connect this via the USB cable that comes with it. Not a big deal, but just wanted to point that out. Turn them back around to the fronts again and just show you what the eyes look like. So here's the original D2. And then the D3, you can see the difference in size. So on the original D2, the aperture was 24 millimeter on the telephoto lens and 2.8 millimeter on the wide field lens. The new one's been increased. Telephoto lens is now 35 millimeters and the wide field lens is 3.4 millimeters. What does that equate to? Well, on the original Jork 2, you had a 100 millimeter focal length, which with the way these are designed, that is equivalent to 675 millimeters on your focal length. On the D3, you now have 150 millimeter focal length, which is equivalent to 737 millimeters. New sensors, the original Jork had the Sony IMX 415 Starvis. D3 has the Sony IMX 678 Starvis 2 so a better chip a better sensor all the way around compared to the original version they still have the USB-C port on the base both for transferring files and for running an external power source so if the battery if the internal battery does not last you long enough or you're worried about it running out or you, or you forgot to charge it before you went out at night you can use an external power source to power the unit and keep it going as long as you need it to also in the bag you'll get your USB-C to USB-C cable for data transfer and charging a little cleaning cloth wipe your lenses off with your user manual you have a strap for the bag just like we got with the other one so you can sling it over your shoulder and these are the solar filters. Now, like I mentioned before, the original deluxe version of the Dwarf came with the solar filters, but you had to screw them in to this holder and then attach them to the front. With the D3, since those filters, including that dual band filter, is built into the unit, there's no more filters to mess with except for your solar filters. So you're gonna shoot the sun, you just make sure, snap it on the front. It's magnetic, just like it was on the old one. So the Dwarf 3 is a little bit larger than the Dwarf 2 was, but not by much. You can probably see the differences now if I put the Dwarf 2 in front of the Dwarf 3. You can see it is a little bit taller, a little bit wider, but the actual thickness, I suppose you would call it, appears to be the same. Like I said, I just received this and got it set up with the app on my Android phone. One thing I'm very curious of, there were stickers in the bottom of this to protect these holes. One was labeled speaker, one was labeled microphone. I believe this actually may talk during um, astro mode, so when we're imaging whatever we're imaging, maybe it announces what it's going to be doing. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to find out tonight, hopefully. It looks like I might have some clear skies. But the other side was labeled microphone, so that's, that's going to be interesting. i got to dig around and see what that is 
actually going to give us. And obviously I'll be doing another video once I get into this and learn all the features. Like I said, right now the app is in beta. So uh, my next video may be a little bit of time before it comes out. Once they start shipping and they push that new app out to everybody, then you can expect a, a full tutorial video from me on it. So let's, uh, let's jump over and take a look at the specifications and the differences between the two a little bit more detail. So these are the specifications listed on Dwarf Labs website. So you can see Dwarf 3 is the first column, Dwarf 2 is the second. As I mentioned before, the aperture diameter has increased. So we have a 35 millimeter telephoto lens and a 3.4 millimeter wide lens and compared to the Dwarf 2 at 24 for the telephoto and 2.8 for the wide. Again, our focal length increases from 100 to 150 and actually drops down a tenth of a millimeter for the wide field focal length, which is, is nothing to be worried about. We're not even going to notice that, right? Equivalent focal length. So we came from 675 with the original D2 and we're up to 737 now for the, the new Dwarf 3. Again, as I mentioned previously, they were using the IMX 415 Starvis sensor. Now they are using the Sony IMX 678 Starvis 2 sensor. Built-in filters. Now the Deluxe, they had two versions of the Dwarf 2 when it first came out, right? You can get just the the classic, I believe they called it, or you can get the deluxe. And the deluxe came with the extra battery. It came with uh, solar filters and as well as uh, an IR cut filter for you. The new one, the only filter you'll be getting is the solar filter I showed you. Everything else is built into the unit. So we still have our, what they call VIS filter, which would be more for daytime stuff, our astro filter, and then also a dual narrowband filter that covers um, hydrogen alpha, hydrogen beta, as well as oxygen three. Batteries, again, we talked about that a little bit before. We've got an inbuilt 10,000 milliamp battery versus the replaceable 5600 milliamp battery storage built in 128 gig of memory versus using a memory card shooting modes is pretty interesting because in the original one we could take photos both with telephoto and the wide field lens but you can see the rest of the features we could only shoot in telephoto with the dwarf 3 we can shoot in, in any of these modes both in telephoto and wide field which can be pretty fun on the astro side of things Think about Milky Way shots, wide field shots. On the video, we've gone from 4K at 26 frames per second to 30 frames per second and 1080p at 30 frames per second to 60 frames per second. Resolution of the images have not changed. That's still the same. I, like I was mentioning before, we had no wide angle video before, but now we do. Same thing with the pictures. Max exposure time, we were limited to 15 seconds with the Dwarf 2, but with the Dwarf 3 in equatorial mode, we can go to 60 seconds. We can actually mount the Dwarf 3 onto a tripod, set it to our current latitude, just like we would do a German equatorial mount and be able to increase our exposure time to 60 seconds per image. That should give us a lot better results as we're imaging throughout the night. Some additional functions that were not included in the Dwarf 2, NFC one touch connection. So if your phone has NFC capabilities, you'll be able to turn the Dwarf 3 on, touch your phone to the side of it, and it'll automatically open up the app for you and connect your phone to the telescope. We can also shoot mosaics now in astro mode as well as the wide angle astrophotography and then we have our dimensions which i showed you side by side you could tell just by looking at the dwarf 3 is slightly larger than the dwarf 2 but the weight has only changed from 1.2 kilograms 1.3 kilograms so not much of a difference in weight so now that we know what the differences are between the dwarf 2 and the dwarf 3 it's time to get outside and take some images like i said it looks like it's supposed to be clear tonight i'm seeing clouds now though so it's always a crap shoot right we'll see what happens but as we're working through the beta for the app i'm going to be pushing this thing to its limits and taking different images of planning, taking images of the sun, do lunar images, uh, deep space objects, EQ mode, everything new that we see in this. Like I mentioned previously, once these start shipping, then you can expect a video from me showing you how to go through everything, get things set up. Hope this was helpful. I know I was excited about seeing this. It's nice to finally get one in my hands. It's a good sign they're coming soon to the rest of you that pre-ordered. While we're here, I want to say thanks to all my members, both here on YouTube and buymeacoffee.com. I appreciate everybody's support. If you have any questions regarding the Dwarf 3, let me know. I'll do my best to answer them or see if I can't get an answer for you. I'm excited to get outside and start playing with this thing. So as always, thanks everybody for your time. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you on the next video and clear skies.